Hey, how's it going? It's a blustery day here on the Long Beach Peninsula, southwestern Washington, and we're out today to do something that's quite popular. Washingtonians and Oregonians and Alaskans alike, and it's, it's razor clam digging. And uh, today, just as an introduction, I wanted to talk to you to, to start about the tools that you need to be able to get into razor climbing. Just a few simple tools will get you into this game and give you a lifetime of good eats. So the first thing is a clam gun. Like I mentioned, it's a popular pastime. We're a couple hours before low tide and people are getting into position. Like I said, the first thing you need is a clam gun. This one's made by Clamvac. And uh, we'll flash Chuck's contact information. Chuck's a local down here, lives in Sandy, Oregon. Yeah, these are good guns. It's a combination of aluminum on the bottom and PVC on top. It's got a vent tube, so when you're pushing it down in the sand, it helps vent air, makes it easier to get it into the sand. And it's a comfortable handle with a hole on top that you plug when you go to pull your clam gun out of the sand. Uh, this is my preferred tool for finding clams. Now, in order to find an actual clam, you've got to locate it first. And an important part of doing that is have a good stout stick. What you want to do is pound the sand. We're going to show it to you here pretty soon, but we pound the sand until we see a clam shell, which is basically anywhere from a nickel to a quarter size hole in the sand that the clam makes, I think by ejecting water up through its neck, it shows you that it's down there. Once you find it, then you dig it. So clam gun and a pounding stick, two important things. You'll notice I've attached a, a string to it. This is so when I drop my stick, when I go to dig a clam, so that the tide doesn't wash it away. And I learned it on the first time that I came out here clamming. And I didn't have a my uh, stick attached to me and the tide kept washing it away. I had to go back and get it many times. Third thing you need is a bag. This clam bag is, is a, a great tool for being able to hold on to your clams. This one's made by Promar. It's very good. It's light. I've got it attached to my wading belt and uh, we're allowed 15 per day. This, this bag's perfect for it. So the final uh, two suggestions are wear, wear a set of waders and even a wading jacket. You're gonna be walking around in the, at the edge of the surf. Occasionally some waves will wash in. You get down on your knees, digging in the sand to get clams out of the hole. Waders are a good thing. A good pair of waterproof gloves. These are also made by Promar. Had these for many years. Use them in all kinds of environments. So with these basic tools, you're ready to go climbing. Found in the, the beach here, went looking for a show. Kind of an aerobic sport here. They show they see a hole in the sand here. I like to work both the suit because it's got bigger clams as we go. when we find one clam, there's usually a few in the same spot, kind of put together in shoals, but you got to find them. There's a spot, there's a shell. And I kind of, sh I like to put my clam gun, it's sort of at a little bit of an angle. The clams tend to orient themselves in the same direction. Once you figure out what that little bit of an angle is, you don't crack nearly as many clams. We want to avoid cracking them if we can. And then it's just a matter of wiggling back and forth as we push down. It takes a little bit of force. You put your hand on this hole. Now, if you do it right, there's a clam waiting for you. So you pound the ground till you see the show, center the clam in the hole, a little bit of an angle, five to 10 degrees, straight down, and that's a nice clean clam. Oh, there's no one right here. Oh, nice to meet you. That's a nice big one there.
and I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be. Living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be. I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be free. Meant it doesn't look like, uh, how long did that take? What was, the, what was the best part of that for you? Uh, probably like seeing a thing and knowing that you're about to get a clam. You like eating these things? Yeah, they're delicious. My favorite part is probably the, uh, when you pull it out and you can see, see the big clam and you know you're going to eat it tonight for dinner. Oh, Caden's first climbing experience. What, should we fry, fry some up when we get home? Yeah. All right. Boys, really this is your second time doing it, and I see you, you came back to get some more. Oh, what do you yeah, think? Definitely. Did you learn anything between the first and the second time? It doesn't get any easier, but it's still yeah. fun. Yeah. Was, yeah. They're digging themselves back into the ground, so yeah. we better pick them up and put them back in the bag. We're not out here alone. We're out on the Long Beach Peninsula. Came out on the Oysterville approach. On me. See the lighthouse in the background and good climbing today. It didn't take long, no more than an hour. Go home, clean some, and get cooking. Okay, so we're back from the field, and then now what we want to do is blanch the clams for about five seconds. And so we've got our Camp Chef 42 quart cookware going here. It's already boiling. I use their uh, high output burner. That works great. Got to do. Got about 15 clams in here. Those we're going to go down in. Push them down one, two, three, four, five. Up and out. Well, all I'm trying to do is just get them to come out of their shells. It's a quick blanch. And into the cold water. So I let them sit in cold water. For maybe about five minutes and, and the shells just generally come right off at that point. If you've got some of this muscle sticks, you just take a sharp knife and quick cut here. Might be able to just yeah, take it apart with your fingers. Yeah, just push it there, comes right out. You don't want to overcook these. It's okay that they, there's a little bit of resistance when you take them out of their shells. That's good. Blanch the clams and pull them out of their shells. First thing I'm going to do is cut the black tip off the neck of the clam. About half an inch of that off. And then I'm going to open up the zipper here. You see, I. There's, well, I opened up one compartment, there's a second compartment right here, and as you get better at this, you can get them both open at the same time, but you want them both open so that the clown lays flat. All you need is a pair of scissors, looks like this, you can do the whole job. So, uh, these light brown organs, these are the gills, you trim those off. The basic concept here is just trim off anything that you don't want to eat. I'm going to trim off the gills. And the cleaning of clam, it's where you put your hands is the most important part. So if you push up with middle finger and the ring finger with your left hand, which you're holding the clam with, you can see this part here, which is the anus and some excrements. So we cut that out. Now, so what I like to do, there's plenty of ways to do this, but at this point, I want to take apart the clam steak from the clam foot. So I just snip it there. I'm going to cut along the window pane. And keep the major muscles attached. And so that's what I have left over. And so any dirt I'll just wipe off to get started. And that, that's a good starting point, and I'll put that in. There's a lot of washing that's going to go on with the clams. If 
especially find a lot of sand gets into the zipper here and you've got to pay careful attention and spend plenty of time at the sink washing your clams because no one wants to eat sand. So when I'm ready to take apart the foot, I hold it like this. Here's the kidneys. And uh, so I basically just trim the whole top of it off and I squeeze with this hand. And what you'll see emerging is the digestive uh, enzymes. You don't want to eat those. Pretty cool looking though. And then I just kind of scrape out what's left of what's dark. And you know, truly that's probably about enough. Some people will butterfly it open. And, uh, and scrape out anything that looks dark, but see, that looks pretty good. And this stuff is, is good to eat. So that's good enough for the foot. So the rewards of clam digging are that you then get to come home and eat them. And one of the ways that most people like to do it is to fry them. So we're gonna show you quickly how we do it. And uh, we start by breading our clams. And in this case, we did uh, seasoned flour and then we rolled in an egg and then we put it in uh, normal, just Italian breadcrumbs. Uh, we like panko for this too. That's a good, good thing to use. You want your oil just about as hot as it can get, just shy of smoking, which is about where this is at. This is peanut oil. Peanut oil's got a really high flash point, one of the highest flash points out there. So that's a good one to use. We're using our Camp Chef uh, Pro 90X Deluxe Three Burner Stove outside. Again, the frying of the clams, it's definitely got an odor. If you can do it outside, that's a good idea. Uh, one of the pro tips, when you, after you bread your clams, let them sit out at room temperature for about an hour. That allows the breading to harden up and it makes for a much better fry. Two, after every time you, you fry a clam, we're gonna wanna scoop out any excess breadcrumbs so that they don't, they don't burn in there. So let's show you what it looks like. We've got the oil just shy of smoking, which with peanut oil is quite high. This is gonna need to be in there for no more than 10 seconds. The faster it gets cooked, the more tender it'll be. That was maybe seven or eight seconds. Spreading. One at a time makes them easier to manage. Again, overcooking them is a bad idea. Got this oil right about where I want it. And the feet, maybe we'll give them just a little bit longer. They're a thick, little thicker piece of meat. And that looks delicious. Razor clams are a really versatile seafood. And we showed you earlier how we fry clams. Wanted to just point out a couple of different dishes that you could consider making. And one of them is linguine and white clam sauce. White clam sauce is something that my father used to make when I was a kid and I love it and I pass it on to my sons and they like it too. So you start by finely dicing a whole white onion and maybe four cloves of garlic. You're gonna saute that in olive oil. Then you'll deglaze the pan with some white wine. Um, this is a, a brand called Passing Time. It's from my friend Damon Hewer, who was an NFL quarterback. And uh, this is really delicious. After you've deglazed the pan, then we're gonna add our clam juice. 
And then finally, we'll add parsley. If I had fresh parsley, I would definitely use that, but I didn't have any, so I'm gonna we'll go with the dried kind. Uh, salt and pepper to taste, and then make up some, put the clams in for about two or three minutes at the end, five minute stops, don't wanna overcook them, and then it's good to go over pasta. Uh, I would strongly suggest adding um, some Parmesan cheese, some fresh Parmesan at the end that really ties the dish together, one of the most delicious ones. Um, chowders, both Manhattan and New England are popular for clam diggers. I've been leaning towards the Manhattan clam chowder because it's, a, it's a, a little bit less calorically dense, maybe a little healthier for you than, than the white-based New England chowders, but the white-based New England chowders is a, is a crowd favorite for sure. And another dish that I've been making quite a bit of is called uh, Ciappino, and that's an Italian fish stew. I make it with clams, Dungeness crab, halibut, and shrimp. I actually had it for lunch today. Fantastic. So I'm still uh, left trying to make stuffed clams or maybe a clams oregano, and I'm also thinking about making a clam dip. So hopefully that gets your mind going around some things you can do with all these fresh razor clams you can acquire in the day.